Okay, good morning, students. Just within a five minutes, I will share my slide now, so that we can start our lecture. Yes. first of all i would like to share my screen yes students Yeah, very good morning to my dear students. Now we will start our lecture. So I welcome you all. Yeah. On behalf of Brun Mumbai Municipal Corporation, online education English medium, myself Jai Shri Haryam Jaiswal from Chinchauli MPS. Today I am hereby to take your lecture of class nine, and today we are going to see the subject that is science two. As this is our revision lectures, so we will take a revision on the chapter. That is chapter number sixteen, heredity and variation. Yes, students. As I am thinking that my students are active in my class, I keep in mind that my students have opened their textbook and are with me to revise the lecture. Yes, and I want that students should read the chapter regularly. Before my lecture and after my lecture, yes. As this is our first session of this chapter, we will move forward by keeping in mind. I want that my students should be active. I will ask you some questions that you have to think and you have to answer yourself only. Okay. Now, moving further, my question is: Think about it. Now. as the chapter's name is heredity and variation i want to know that do all the boys and girls of your class look alike this is my question to you to all students that do all the boys and the girls of your class look alike you are from which class 9th standard so in your class maybe 50 plus students are there or 30 plus students will be there so you can see around you or you can see in your uh, surrounding also that can you find anyone who is similar or do all the boys and girls of your class look alike this is my question the answer will be what they are not seen they are different yeah second question is how is the color of your skin when i will ask you to compare this with your own family that is with you with your grandfather grandmother father mother cousins which are there which are present in your family you can when you see in your family also what you will observe that what we will observe 
something will similar but most of the things are different yeah then next question what is the next question next question is how is the shape of your face compare with your two friends the shape of your face will be different then what about your height it will also vary color of your eyes it will also vary with your friends orientation of thumb some will be having broad thumb some will be having long thumb some will be having short thumb yes on this basis earlier we have seen that there is a great variation within every species in nature yeah so in this chapter we shall study the factors that give rise to this variation okay in this chapter means which chapter heredity and variation in this chapter we shall study the factors that give rise to this variation yes so moving further to this chapter first topic which we will discuss is about the inheritance yes now what do you mean by inheritance the tendency or the branch of biology which studies the transfer of characteristics of organisms from one generation to the next and the genes in particular this is called as what genetics but what do you mean by inheritance the inheritance the tendency to transmit the variation from one generation to the next it is called as inheritance means the variations the characters which are transferred from the one generation to another generation it is called as inheritance so offsprings produced offsprings produced through sexual reproduction show more variation okay the offsprings which are produced through this sexual reproduction they shows more variation but those produced through asexual reproduction have comparatively much lesser variation okay keep this point in your mind now moving further to the topic that is genetic that is genetic now what is genetic the branch of biology which studies the transfer of characteristics of organisms from one generation to the next and genes in particular is called as genetic means if this branch is not there we can't understand we can't know about the transfer of this characteristics how this is happened so now a days many studies are going on on this that is genetics so what is genetics genetics is a branch of biology which studies in the transfer of characteristics of organisms from one generation to the next and the genes in particular it is called as genetics understand up till here now the new progeny is also formed through the process of reproduction except for a few minor differences the offspring shows great similarities with parents as if you can see with your parents you are just similar to your parents yes or no something will vary but most of the things most of the characteristics are similar to your parents only so organisms which are produced by asexual reproduction show minor variation however offsprings produced through sexual reproduction show comparatively greater variation comparatively greater variation yes now see in this picture students this is all about the heredity now now what we are able to see in this picture observe the picture of this elephant and the baby elephant you can see that this two animals which we are seeing in this slide they are similar to each other yes or no yes see the second picture here see the puppy is as similar as his mother dog yes yes or no so what are the reason behind this we can see further but first of all see this picture see this monkey mother monkey and a baby monkey here this two are similar see the skin tone and all see the ear lobe see the fingers see the face yes or no 
not only in the case of animals but also in the case of human being see this mother and his and her kid they are fair see their eyes see their nose see their structure of the face mostly they are similar so behind this what is the reason what is the reason behind this it is heredity now what do you mean by heredity transfer of characteristics from parents to offspring is called as heredity what is heredity the transfer of transfer of characteristics from parents to offspring is called was heredity therefore every living organisms has similar characteristics as its parents yes or no yes what the every living organisms every living organisms has similar characteristics as its parents now carefully observe your classmates ear lobes you can see your friends ear lobes you can see that each and every students are having different ear lobes yes or no yes so irrespective of all of us being humans what difference do you notice in our skin color in our class only you can observe that there are different types of skin colors yes or no yes so as all of you are in standard 9 yeah why then are some students tall and some short as you are in same standard same uh, class some are of same age also but then also we can see the different height yes some are short some are tall so all this this is depends on the study of genetics and the heredity heredity means the heredity the characteristics which we get from our parents yeah these things are not coming from the surrounding but it comes from our parents okay now moving to the next topic yes inherited traits and expression of traits here traits means what characteristics what do you mean by traits character six now my question is how do the specific traits of characteristics appears in organisms so what is the answer behind this the specific characteristics seen in any living organism are due to the genes are due to the genes which is transmitted from its parent to the offspring it this all this characters which we are gaining this is all because of the genes which are transferred from our parents to us yes this is the answer of this now and we can say due to the dna also in the further portion we can all see the more detail about the dna now though there are many similarities between parents and their offspring there are some differences too yes or no then when we are saying that there are many similarities between parents and of their offspring then we can see there are some differences also yes or no yes so the similarities and differences are all effect of the heredity this is all due to what effect of heredity so now we can just now we can see let us study the mechanism of heredity now we can move forward what is the mechanism of what heredity now what is this now see the inherited characters which are based on the chromosomes present in the cell these all characters which are we have seen these are all present in the cell and the dna molecule which is present in the chromosomes dna is present where in the chromosome and the sequence with which the nucleotides are arranged in the dna molecule based on the sequence of the nucleotides and present in the dna molecule just now you are learn, you must be knowing only the words but when, as we move further you will know all about the nucleotides their pairings everything but only just now you have to keep in mind this all the characteristics are present in the cell the dna molecule which is, which is present in the chromosome and in dna we can see the different nucleotides and they are they are arranged in a dna molecule and based on the sequence of the nucleotide present in the dna molecule a particular protein is synthesized what is synthesized a particular protein is synthesized and this segment of dna 
is called as a gene this dna is called as a gene okay and it is necessary to know the relationship of this proteins with the characteristics of the organism to understand the concept of this heredity let us consider the characteristic that is plant height and we know that there are growth hormones in the plant yes or no so why this is happen so this is we can see from one example that increase in height of plants depends on the quantity of the growth hormone yes in this picture you can see uh, some plants how they grow and all the plants are also having different heights but what is the reason, uh, uh, reason behind this do you know now we can see here that the growth of a height or the growth in the height of a plant depends upon the growth hormone not only plant in animals also or in human beings also there are some hormones which are responsible for the growth so if we are studying in case of plants there is also an hormone which is responsible to grow the to uh, take the growth or to uh, perform the growth processes okay so due to the quantity of a growth hormone the height of a plant is determined okay if the height is more it means the growth hormones are present in the plant is more okay but the quantity of a growth hormones produced by plant which is depends only upon the efficiency of the concerned enzyme okay the thing the enzyme which is responsible for this growth it is just seen in the presence of the plant only okay so efficient enzymes produce a greater quantity of the hormone resulting into a taller plant when the when this enzymes is secreted more the height of the plant will also more but thus the height depends upon the sequence of the nucleotides present in dna if this enzyme is less produced in the plant then what will happen the height of a plant will not more it will less understand up till here that the reasons what are the reasons which are responsible for the growth of a plant there is needed a hormone and all this is due to the gene okay now moving further to the next topic that is chromosomes now what do you mean by chromosomes now what are chromosomes the chromosomes are made up of nucleic acids and proteins chromosomes are made up of nucleic acids and proteins okay and they have hereditary characteristics located on them in the form of dna molecule on that chromosomes what is present dna molecule and the number of chromosomes is specific for every species understand up till here what is chromosome the structure of in the nucleus of the cell that carries the hereditary characteristic is called as chromosomes it is made up of mainly of nucleic acids and proteins it is made up of what nucleic acids and proteins yes now <coughs> during cell divisions chromosomes can be clearly seen under the compound microscope we can't see this uh, chromosomes with our naked eyes we can see all this chromosomes only through the compound microscope genes which contain the information about the hereditary characteristic is coded form are located on the chromosomes and each species has a specific number of chromosomes now we can see in this picture you can see in this picture the purple color x form it is what it is the chromosome understand each chromosome is made up of what dna how it looks it appears dumbled shape yeah midway during the cell division you can see the upper part two identical chromatids upper upper part means it is just like a v yeah the two upper identical chromatids that is one is a exact copy of the other and each contain one dna molecule in this understand then in one arm it is known as p arm the upper part is called as an p arm structure what it is p arm structure in the center see the center is also there in the picture yeah it is called as what 
centromere means constricted point of the chromosomes where this two v's get in contact that center part is called as what centromere the lower part arms are called as what q arm they are called as q arm which is long arm structure and see the downside dna molecules spiracles are seen yeah this long string like dna molecule formed into a compact structure by protein called histone if they are not in a spring form then what will happen it can occupy more place in the chromosomes or in the cell so due to this reason this dna molecule are the are arranged in a spherical form in a string form understand so that it can't occupy the place and for this into a compact structure who is responsible here it is responsible is stones who is responsible so moving further this is about the of a chromosomes what is chromosome what is the structure of chromosome up till now you understand yes now moving further to the next part that is types of chromosomes now on which basis this types of chromosomes are uh, distinguished the types of chromosomes can be easily identified during the cell division but on which basis this are do on uh, these are divided into different types of chromosomes on the basis of the position of the centromere okay who is responsible the position of the centromere up till here you understand now moving further to the different types of chromosomes yes so classification of chromosome it is based on what on the position of the centromere now first of all we will see the telocentric chromosome now what do you or we can start with the metacentric chromosome first of all we will start with the metacentric chromosome this one here the centromere is exactly at the midpoint see in the picture you can see that the centromere is exactly at the midpoint in this chromosome and therefore the chromosomes look like the english letter v english letter v it just look like a english letter v here the upper arms are called as p arm lower arm are called as q arm and in the center it is a centromere up till here you understand what is metacentric metacentric means the centromere which is exactly at the mid point of the chromosome understand what is metacentric after that we can see the sub metacentric now what is a sub metacentric chromosome you can see in the picture the centromere is somewhere near the midpoint it is not at the midpoint not at the center it is just near somewhere near to the what midpoint in this chromosome which therefore looks like what english letter l english letter l and here one arm is smaller means upper arm p arm and the q arm is longer understand in metacentric it is v shape in sub metacentric it is l shape now moving further to the acrocentric chromosome now what is acrocentric chromosome the centromere is near one end of this chromosome which therefore looks like the english letter j okay it is not in the center it is not near the centromere yeah but it is just near to the end of the chromosome so here what is the structure which like structure is uh, here the structure is look like a english letter j and here one arm is much smaller than the other one here the p arm is much smaller than the q arm okay understand up till here we have up till now we have seen metacentric sub metacentric and acrocentric chromosome and last type of the chromosome is telocentric chromosome 
So what is telocentric chromosome now? The centromere is right at the end of the what? Chromosome, making the chromosome look like the English letter I. Yes, here the centromere is moved upward at the end point of the chromosome. So here it looks like an English letter I. And this chromosome consists of only one arm. Here P arm is totally absent. Only downside, lower side Q arm is present. Understand up till here? So this chromosome consists only of one arm. This is all about the classification of chromosomes, which is based on what? Position of a centromere. Yeah, this is all due to the position of the centromere. Now, moving further. You can see in the charts, which is given in the textbook also, that chromosome number of some organism has been given in the following table. C. different organisms are having different number of chromosomes. Yes, in case of crab, how many number of chromosomes are there? 200. In maize, 20 number of chromosomes are there. Frog, 26 number of chromosomes. Dog, 78. Dog is having 78 number of chromosomes. Cat, 38 number of chromosomes are there. Horse, 64. If we can see in the vegetables, just like a potato, how many chromosomes are there? 48. When we can see in case of round worm, here four number of chromosomes are there. And in humans, means in us, how many? 46 number of chromosomes are present. So, are they, Seeing this chart, you can understand that the number of chromosomes differ in each and every living organism. It is not like that if we are having 46 chromosomes, means all the other organisms are also having 46 number of chromosomes. It differs. It different. And due to this reason only, each and every species on our earth, in our nature, is different to each other. All are different. Not a Single species is similar to each other. Huh? Some of the characters are same, but they are not same. They are not alike. Understand? Up till here, this is all about the chromosome number of some organisms. It is all about the organisms. But now we can see that Based on the position of centromere, chromosomes are categorized into four types that is metacentric, submetacentric, acrocentric, and telocentric. Now, one more thing I want to highlight that is based on the functions of the chromosomes can be somatic. Now, what do you mean by somatic here? Somatic means body chromosomes. In the textbook, it is given. See, generally in a somatic cells, what do you mean by somatic cells? Body chromosomes are in pairs. If the pair consists of similar chromosomes by shape and organization, then they are called as what? Homologous chromosomes. They are called as homologous chromosomes. And if they are not similar, then they are called as heterologous chromosomes. These two terms you should understand. Homologous and heterologous. What do you mean by homologous? When the somatic cell chromosomes are in pairs and the if pair con consists of similar chromosomes by shape and organization, then they are called as homologous. And if they are not similar, then they are called as heterologous chromosomes. Up till here, you understood? In case of organisms that reproduce sexually, one of the chromosomal pairs is different from all than others. Okay. So, these chromosomes of this different pair are called as what? Six chromosomes or allosomes. What? Six chromosomes or allosomes. And all other chromosomes are called as autosomes. So, in our further lectures, you can see all about this in brief. That is, what is sex chromosomes? What is allosomes? What is autosomes? We can see the different structures of DNA. What is? We can see in brief that how the formation is done. In our body. So now we can take a quick recall on the we have seen today. 
yeah today what we have seen we have seen about the definition of inheritance yeah what is inheritance the tendency to transmit the variation from one generation to the next generation it is called as inheritance i want that my students should read the chapter regularly so that it can be what you can collect it in your mind and while writing the papers you can write the definitions correctly and this type of term short terms can be asked in the definitions to define so learn it properly read it properly and understand it okay this is all about the inheritance what we have seen that offspring produced through sexual reproduction show more variations but those produced through asexual reproductions have comparatively much lesser variations then what we have seen we have seen about the genetics yeah what is genetics the branch of biology which studies the transfer of characteristics of organisms from one generation to the next and the genes in particular it is called as what it is called as genetics okay now when i asked you to observe the what your classmates carefully observe your classmates ear lobes so what we have seen that the some of the students have ear lobes completely attached some are having partially attached ear lobes while some have totally free ear lobes means what we have seen there are different types of ear lobes irrespective of all of us being humans what difference do you notice in our skin color in our class every person has different skin color yes or no and some are fair some are dark while some are intermediate mean not there so much fair not so much dark yeah so no two persons are exactly alike with respect to skin color yes in case of height also so some are tall some are short so or what is depend what is responsible for this it is responsible heredity now what is heredity a transfer of characteristics from where from parents to offspring is called heredity yes it is called as heredity therefore every living organism has similar characteristics as its parent yeah same so now when we have seen keep why the specific traits or characteristics appears in organism or who is responsible for this dna is responsible for this so when we consider this the growth of height of a plant depends upon a growth hormone yeah and why it is due to the quantity of a growth hormone the height of a plant is determined and the quantity of growth hormones produced by plants depends upon the efficiency of the concerned enzymes an efficient enzyme produces a greater quantity of a hormone resulting into a taller plant means what when the enzyme is produced more that height of a plant is also tall or more but if the enzymes which is produced less then what will happen the plant height will be short understand moving further to the next topic that is chromosomes so what is the chromosomes the structure in the nucleus of the cell that carries the hereditary characteristics is called as chromosomes yeah and they are seen only at the time of cell division and this appear dumbled shape and we can't see with our naked eyes so for this what is needed compound microscope yes what is needed compound microscope so there is a primary constriction or a centromere on each chromosome and this centromere divides the chromosomes into what two arms that is the short arm is called as p arm while the long arm is called as q arm so it looks like what so it looks like a structure yes or no it looks like a structure x so the upper two identical chromatids are similar in hand height yes in the center what is present centromere the upper arm is called as what p arm in the lower side their arms are called as q arm and in the end there is a presence of dna molecule which is dna molecule the long string like dna molecule formed into a compact structure by proteins called histones so this is a structure of a chromosomes yeah so 
now further what we have seen the types of chromosomes and all uh, what is dependent it is based on the position of the centromere so on the position of the centromere this chromosomes are divided into four types that are metacentric chromosome submetacentric chromosome acrocentric uh, chromosome telocentric chromosome metacentric means what centromere is present in the mid point submetacentric uh, centromere means what centromere is present just near the mid point acrocentric chromosome means what it is just near to the end of the chromosome it is just near the end of the chromosome which is called as acrocentric chromosome and what do you mean by telocentric chromosome here this centromere is just at the end of the chromosome where p arm is totally absent here only the q arm is there so what is the structure of metacentric chromosome the structure here we can see it is v like english letter v sub metacentric it is just the english letter l acrocentric it is just like a english letter i or j it's a j and telocentric chromosome last one it is just like a english letter i so this is all about the classification of the chromosomes which is based on the position of the centromere then we have seen about the homologous chromosome heterologous chromosome so what is homologous chromosomes when the somatic cells chromosomes are in pairs and they consist of a similar chromosomes by shape and organization then they are called as homologous chromosomes and they are not similar they are called as heterologous chromosomes so in case of organisms that reproduce sexually one of the chromosome pairs is different from all other then chromosomes of this different pairs are called as what sex chromosomes or allosomes and all other chromosomes are called as autosomes so my dear students up till here today we have seen now in our further lecture we can see about the deoxyribonucleic acid dna so up till that i but i should read this lesson revise this lesson up uh, not lesson the part which we have taught today that part you should read the lesson properly so that you can understand the further topic so thank you my dear students for listening my lecture